trying to persuade people of is that the justification for the British to replace Trident doesn't have water. We've had the supposedly independent uh, nuclear deterrent for the last 50 years, and we're now planning to replace it for the next 50. And the justification is that, of course, a country like Russia might go nasty again, or some intermediate powers like um, uh, Pakistan or India might make that difficult for us, or alternatively, of course, we might come under renewed terrorist threats. The basic supposition is that if you are threatened by a nuclear weapon state, but do not have your own, then you have no option but to knuckle under. And I think that's entirely wrong. The first and obvious point is that um, there are 188 members of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, of whom all but five have signed up as non-nuclear weapon states. And if it is of the nature of a non-nuclear weapon state to be at the mercy of a nuclear weapon state, they seem to get on remarkably well. It doesn't seem to greatly trouble them. They're not uh, subject to, to nuclear black blackmail by the day, so to speak. And looked at from the other point of view, have, has the possession of nuclear weapons by us over the last 50 years done us any actual good? No, you cannot demonstrate in any respect whatever anything that we would have done, uh, that, that we couldn't have done if we hadn't had them, or anything that would have happened to us that wouldn't have done, wouldn't have happened if we hadn't. If, in other words, we've, we've benefited in no way from, um, from having them. Why might that not be true of the next 50 years? Of course, the, the government rightly makes the point that you can't really predict the next 50 years. Um, obviously, that's true. The whole configuration of things may have, may have changed by then. Um, America's focus of interest may have, may have shifted decisively to the, uh, to the, to, to the Pacific. Um, there may be more uh, nuclear weapon states or less. Um, Russia may be in the ascendant or may be in trouble. Same goes for China, we just don't know. Um, so granted that the future is unpredictable. But in what ways can one possibly see um, British nuclear weapons being used to us in ways that have not applied over the last 50 years? Well, the first and obvious point to make is that we're deeply involved with the Americans. Um, we're under their umbrella as far as NATO is concerned, that's perfectly clear. We've also made it plain in so many words that we're not going to undertake any major operation in any other part of the world except as part of an alliance in which America will be in the lead. And so one could reasonably argue um, that so long as the Americans are going to retain theirs, ours is entirely redundant. Um, and I think that's true. And it's also true, of course, that we are very dependent upon them. I mean, the missiles, the D-5 missiles in our Trident submarines, are not British. They are American on high, you might say, in a certain number. They, go, they come from an American store, they are tested under American auspices, they go back again. Rather like a Caligas cylinder, you know, they're on, they're on high for, for as many as we want. And it's perfectly clear from the Mutual Defence Assistance Pact, under which they're provided, and it was recently renewed, that this arrangement is entirely dependent upon it being in the Americans. National interest, not surprisingly. And therefore, if the British went ahead and did something of which the Americans obviously disapproved, then they could withdraw support for, the, um, for, for, for Trident. And although they couldn't, promise, they couldn't prevent us firing one off in dire emergency, um, if we so decided, it would mean that within two or three years we wouldn't have a system. So, okay, there might be circumstances in which the Brits are left on their own, albeit still um, able to operate and fire the system. Would it necessarily follow uh, that if we were then without the system and that the uh, and other people had, we should have no option but to knuckle under to whatever they want us to do? And the precedents there are not very impressive either. For example, the uh, Russians went ahead with the Berlin airlift at a time when America had nuclear weapons. They hadn't. And when we stuck it out and supplied the, supplied the, the city by air, the Russians backed down and were defeated. The Americans, at the time of the Korean War, made it perfectly clear to China that they were contemplating um, 
a nuclear response if, if the Chinese um, interfered. The Chinese did interfere. The Americans suffered the worst tactical defeat in, in uh, probably in all history, you know, the road back 50 or 100 miles or so. And the American weapons, the American nuclear weapons, which the Chinese had not got then, um, were totally uh, irrelevant. The same goes for the Falklands. Um, we ha supposedly had a, a nuclear submarine crowing around in the South Atlantic that didn't deter a, a cult area, nor did it help us to repossess the islands in no way at all. Them. So these are all instances where um, you might have thought um, that countries would gain some benefit or the victims would lose something um, from not possessing, and it just hasn't worked out to, to, to be so. So maybe there is um, just a tiny niche. You can see the dimmest possibility. You can feel in the pit of your stomach that if, you, that, that if we had got rid of nuclear weapons and somebody else had kept them, we were threatened, we might feel more comfortable. But, but let's take an even more... Um, uh, even more topical case. Let's suppose that there are a lot of nuclear weapons materials loose in, in Siberia. Everyone knows that. Let's suppose that some has been smuggled through Central Asia and is being fabricated into a nuclear weapon by um, some of the engineers who worked under A.Q. Khan in somewhere in northwest Pakistan um, in one of those um, workshops on the frontier, um, and we know this, but we don't know where it is, and the uh, Pakistani government says it's nothing to do with them, although we suspect that the um, ISI um, have got a hand in it. And we know vaguely what the plan is. The plan is to ship this, this device, whatever it is, down to Karachi, and put it into a succession of merchant ships, sail it round to Brest, they are put it into a, to a, the, the fish hold of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a fishing vessel, sail it to a, coast, uh, to a, to a port on the, on the east coast, let's say Lerstoft or somewhere like that, but we wouldn't know where. Tell us it's there and say that unless we release all Muslim prisoners um, and uh, remove all troops from um, Afghanistan and Iraq, it'll be loosed off. A very nasty case of nuclear, nuclear blackmail. What use would our Trident system be in those circumstances? And therefore, if we hadn't got them, in what way would we be worse off? So my contention is that this, that this quite expensive system, I mean, it's talking about 20 million or so, um, um, 20 billion um, pound, I mean, it's quite a substantial amount. Uh, at a time when the defense budget is definitely pressed, at a time of great, great financial stringency, at a time when we know that there are many things that the British Army would like, to help it fight in, in particular Afghanistan that it hasn't got. Um, can we really afford to go ahead with this very expensive project, which is going to do us little or no demonstrable benefit? My case rests.